The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Colette Shabrams, and Colette is the executive director of Pacific Pride Foundation. Thanks for being here, Colette. Thank you so much for having me today. Gosh, now I want to hear all about Pacific Pride Foundation how long you've been around and what you're doing for folks these days. Thank you, yeah. So Pacific Pride Foundation has been serving this community since 1976. Oh, so we've been here for over four decades, um, serving wow. the LGBTQ plus community and the HIV AIDS community of all of Santa Barbara County. So we are focused, wow. um, we have an office downtown Santa Barbara and yes. also downtown Santa Maria. Okay. And then we have programs and services that span Santa Barbara, Goleta, Lompoc, Orcutt, Santa Maria, and actually beyond the county borders as well. Wow, I had no idea you guys covered so much territory. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful staff. We have seven of us working throughout the county and we serve over 10,000 people every year. Seven people, 10,000 clients. We're busy. Clients. You are, <laughs> gee whiz. Yeah. So our uh, client, our, our, our clients and our programs include youth and elder programs. Oh. We do education, testing, and resourcing for the HIV and Hep C communities. We mm. do a syringe exchange program, actually, where we will... Um, uh, safely dispose of used needles in exchange mm -hmm. for a clean needle. We're the only organization in the county that does that. Really? So we're a harm reduction model kind of a, a facility. So we really meet clients where they are. And a new program that we have just started in the past year is actually um, training and teaching people how to use Narcan. And Narcan is actually, um, it's, a, it's a prescription um, and what it does is it reverses um, when somebody is in an opioid overdose, mm -hmm. it actually um, reverses that overdose experience and can even save lives. Wow. And so you have training on how to use that and all? That's exactly what staff. we do. So we have our staff fully trained on it, and then we go out into the community and train other staffs in clinics or, you okay. know, frontline officers, things like that. For other on organizations. How to, other organizations on how to administer that. And then we also give it directly to clients. So we want it in the hands of people really? who might need it most, who have loved ones, who might be, um, you know, in the throes of addiction, just in case it happens in front of them in their household so that they know how to use it. But you wouldn't like train a person how to give it, how to self-administer. That, that wouldn't be a possibility. Couldn't really self-administer no. it? No. So it would be something where so, if you were in a situation where, you know, it happened around you or something like okay, that. Okay, so or if like somebody, a family member or friends. That's or exactly people it. People who are typically around yeah. someone who might. So Pacific Pride Foundation in general, we have really a history of taking what's going on on the national front, on the state front, and doing it locally. So Good just like we're seeing an opioid epidemic right now and a national crisis, Pacific Pride Foundation is addressing it with this new, um, you know, uh, Narcan program that we've established. Good for and then you. we do all kinds of things for the LGBTQ plus community as well. So we have welcoming trainings for businesses and other organizations. We do uh, competency trainings. So we go into places um, and train soon to be teachers at colleges and things like that and really tell them the difference between gender identity versus sexual orientation and That's you know important. different outcomes for yeah. those populations depending on the setting. 
So I heard you twice, I heard you say, I think I heard you say the word plus. What does that mean? Yeah. So we're really identifying that there are many more definitions oh. of, um, you know, people who might not identify as heterosexual or, you know, in layman's terms, like straight. Um, mm -hmm. So lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer questioning, and then we add this plus. Um, you know, people are identifying now that if gender is fluid, so is sexuality. And so there's this kind of, we do this little addition sign uh -huh. oh, um, I gotcha. to make sure that people are included and feel welcome under sort of the umbrella of that term. That's great. So they feel, well, I'm, I don't fit any of these things, but oh, there's the plus. That means there's room for me. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is great. Yeah. So um, you're a 501c3. We are. Nonprofit. People can make uh, tax deductible donations, I'll bet. Yes. And actually, we just started, um, we've had a monthly giving program for many years, but we just kind of rebranded it and put some energy around it. Oh, good. So we're calling it um, Partners in Pride. Oh, and what a great name. So that connects to all of our programs Partners and services. And and we're just releasing this information um, so people can donate on our website, through our website, which is pacificpridefoundation.org. Um, and they can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and social media oh, as man, well. Oh man, you guys are with it. We are with it. That's great. <laughs> yeah, we love it. We have a monthly newsletter that we send out to over 5,000 people in our community. So we're talking to them about current events, um, issues that are, you know, up in political things that might affect or derail the LGBTQ plus community or, you know, hurt us in some way. So there's a lot going on right now and we all need to stay as current as possible. Wow. Yeah. So you are out in front of it of what's happening. As much as possible. Yeah. So for example, um, Last year and, and for this um, upcoming year as well, we have done a Pride Festival. And we've also done some kind of visibility around that event. So um, last year we did uh, what was called a visibility march. So we actually, pro uh, it wasn't really protesting. It was kind of bringing the community together at De La Guerra Plaza oh, okay. and just kind of talking about issues that were up. Um, hate crimes, for example, mm. are up nationally, they're up locally um, for the LGBTQ plus community and also other um, minority populations, including people of color. Um, and that affects uh, trans women of color the most. Wow. wow. So we just want to make sure that people know that we're here in your community. And that was the point of the visibility march. Um, and that actually led right into our Pride Festival. So every summer, Pacific That's Pride great. Foundation, we bring together a couple thousand people um, yeah. and do this Pride Festival. It's free to the community. So anybody can come and attend. You can be an ally. You can be you know, interested. If a family or friend or a loved one is also LGBTQ+, mm -hmm. you're invited. You're welcome as well. It's always a great day. It's family friendly. Um, and we have an amazing community that rallies around it. You can donate for that any time of year. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have this great committee that comes together and they work almost year round to make this event happen. Oh, wow. So, so you use a lot of volunteers, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. With so seven uh, employees. Can, yeah, you can probably <laughs> do the math. If there are seven employees and we're serving 10,000 10, people every year, we cannot do this work. We have an amazing board of directors we have great, steady volunteers and committee members that really um, know how to use their skills and their talents to connect back with Pacific Pride Foundation in a myriad of ways. Um, legally, sometimes people, mm -hmm. we have a, a newer volunteer right now who's helping with resumes and just helping build oh, up skills for some of our young adults mm -hmm. who, um, you know, are looking to get into careers and looking for next steps there. So we do a lot of work with our youth. We're in schools. Um, we're in every junior high and high school between here, really? between Carpinteria and Santa Maria. So wow. we're doing a lot of that work um, every week, every month, and um, it's, it's great. So people can, uh, like, let's just say someone wants to get more involved, they can go on your website and figure out how to be a volunteer and what some of those 
sort of activities might look like? Yeah, please do. We do events throughout the year as well. So sometimes people can come and just, you know, help us do an event or they can help with our youth group. Um, they can help with the elders project that we have going on. All of those happen year round. And then some people just come into the office, help us doing, you know, outreach and That's things great. like that. Um, and then we also have a full counseling program that we do. So oh. we rely on counseling interns to help us administer um, therapy weekly okay. as well. So we have a whole kind of clinical team as well on a volunteer basis that um, helps the community in that way. That is great. So people, there's a wide range of ways that people can volunteer. And if there are any that require training, then you provide the training. We're happy to train volunteers. We're happy to... Um, onboard them in a lot of different ways and also meet them where they are. So if they have, you know, some skill that they want to give us um, remotely, for example, mm. we've had people kind of remote in and speak to our youth group about, you know, different oh, ideas cool. or their career path or, you know, being out and in politics or out and a chef, whatever it yeah. is. So we love having volunteers come in um, and support the organization. Absolutely. And so I would imagine you collaborate with a lot of other organizations and groups. We do. We are in schools, hospitals. We collaborate with police departments, sheriff departments. Um, we're in um, the foster care system as well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, just the other day I added it up and we have um, 35 active partners with other organizations to this to the day so wow. we are in we work with um, you know domestic violence issues and just across the gamut because we know that lgbtq plus people are diverse and everywhere and that means that we're only as strong as our partners as we're collaborating and finding those people and and connecting them with resources wow. and the community that's around them so i'll bet you might have a story for us a story that would illustrate the Maybe the I, impact on I someone's do. life? I do, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, one thing that's happening more frequently now, I've been in and around Pacific Pride Foundation for over a decade um, and in this role as executive director for just about three years. And one of the things that I'm noticing is the amount of um, parents who are coming into the organization and maybe their, their young person, their, their child, is coming out to them mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. So just the other day, um, we received this phone call from a mom and her uh, teen was coming out as non-binary mm -hmm. and she didn't know what that meant. So she called and said, you know, I wanna be accepting, I know about gays and <laughs> I lesbians, but I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know, you could tell so, me. <laughs> uh, so under the transgender spectrum, there are some people who are um, medically assigned at birth as male and they feel female. And okay, so they okay. transition from medically assigned at birth male to female. Mm -hmm. um, and reverse, yes. uh, you know, medically assigned as female, they transition to male. Yeah. And then there are these in-between people who they don't feel either male or female. Oh. And so that is non-binary. Binary, -binary non -binary. is two different oh. things. Okay. So non-binary is not one or the other, it's in-between. And so this mom came in and she just had like a 20 minute conversation with myself and our LGBTQ plus manager. And we just had this conversation about basically what we do with our welcoming and our um, like consultation trainings, mm -hmm. just kind of gave it to her yeah. <laughs> one, you know, yeah, one yeah, on sure. one. And it just really helped her kind of open her eyes to now I have some vocabulary so that when my kid says That's something, so then I can relate back to them in a, in a specific way. Well, good for her. For Great for her. Not just being open-minded, but going after the answers. That's exactly it. And I think, you know, one thing I want people to know about Pacific Pride Foundation is you don't have to know everything uh. to walk through our doors. So we will meet you where you are. If you just have questions, you don't know the vocabulary, but you want to learn, yeah. you want to know more, yeah. you want to be welcoming, that's where we will meet you and we can take care of the rest. Oh my gosh, Colette. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. I appreciate this is it. fascinating work you're doing, and thank you for all your good work. Absolutely. Thank you. 
and thank you for joining us on 805 Focus and we'll see you next time.